televiziune în proveniența de la SSR Ginevra. Circuitul internațional pentru la televiziune în proveniența de SSR Geneva. International Television Sound Circuit from SSR Geneva. Internationale Fernsehtonleitung von SSR Genf. Linea suono internazionale della televisione in provenienza dalla SSR Ginevra. Circuitul internazionale per la televisione in provenienza da SSR Genève. International Television Sound Circuit from SSR Geneva. Internationale Fernsehtonleitung von SSR Genf. Linea suono internazionale della televisione in provenienza dalla SSR Ginevra. Circuitul internazionale per la televisione in provenienza da SSR Genève. International Television Sound Circuit from SSR Geneva. Internationale Fernsehtonleitung von SSR Genf. Linea suono internazionale della televisione in provenienza dalla SSR Ginevra. Circuitul Television Sound Circuit from SSR Geneva. Internationale Fernsehtonleitung von SSR Genf. Linea suono internazionale della televisione in provenienza dalla Circuitul internazional per la televisione in provenienza de SSR Genève. International Television Sound Circuit from SSR Geneva. Internationale Fernsehtonleitung von SSR Genf. Linea suono internazionale della televisione in provenienza dalla SSR Ginevra. Circuitul internazional per la televisione in provenienza. 1, 2, 3. Can you hear me? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is a test from SSR Geneva. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. One, it's okay? Yes, Simon, if, uh, if, to, to confirm it sounds okay. So, yeah, uh, they had a, a big, big problem. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, the lines are cut between Paris and uh, Switzerland. Oh. The, line, the sound lines. And now? And now it's okay. <laughs> Still technical problems. Mm -hmm. Is the sound well now? Yes, sir. I hear you, but not very clearly. One, two, three, four. Yes, I do. If it is a bit louder, it will be better. Can we give them a feel about you? Um, is SSR Geneva calling loud? I hope you will record where you see that you can hear the sound now, and um, Mr. Armani likes to have the earpiece a little bit louder. This is BBC? Yeah. This is NBC now, this is CNBC. I see. So we, they're now seeing you in America, this will be going live. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. It's better now, huh? You uh, tell them that I cut off now before my, um... Yeah. Okay, we've taken this... Uh, Glenn told Simon we've taken the speaker off. Okay, so yeah. anything that should come through me. Hello, everyone. We'll be with you in about four no, minutes, Your Excellency, and um, you tell me they're trying to boost this now for you. So. Okay. Okay. You asked for the picture, but how they want to have the... Yeah, um, Glenn, any camera PR has to come through me.
Can we talk down a little bit, please? Talk down, yeah. So it will be two anchors. Two anchors are hosting the show. One is named John and one is named Kevin. I'm sure they'll introduce themselves to you. Thank so you. So you'll hear two gentlemen. Commercials now, bro. Okay. Did, did you hear them introducing you that they could? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. they're going to commercials and then they're coming back to you. Okay. Good afternoon to you. It's a pleasure. Good morning to you. Well, I think there is enough oil now going to the market, probably even more than what we need. I am almost positive that nothing will happen to the Saudi oil fields. It's almost impossible for the Iraqis to inflict any damage on the Saudi oil field. The Iranian oil fields were so near to them and they were not able to do anything for eight years. But maybe they can do something when it comes to the oil installations. That's another case. Not with their uh, air forces, 
because they don't have the superiority as they did with the Iranians, but probably with their missiles, they might hit something here or there. I think it will be very negligible. I won't worry about it. You know, there is already a reduction in the supply, not caused by the oil directly, but the tankers, they don't want to call on Rasta Noura because of the high premium of insurance. That is the reason, and probably this will be corrected, and the supply of oil will go even higher than what we need in the market. Not officially speaking, I think both Egypt, Syria, and mostly Saudi Arabia will continue fighting the Iraqis until they liberate Kuwait. But the man in the street will react violently. And this is exactly what President Saddam Hussein wants. He does not want to hit Israel just for the pleasure of doing this. It is to change the picture to show it as if it is an Arab-Israeli conflict. It remains to be seen if the Israelis are willing to please Mr. Saddam Hussein. Pardon? Oh, I'm sure that they will win this war. There is no uh, comparison between the Allied forces and the technology they have and the real training of their soldiers compared to the Iraqis. Very little, in, if any, in the first stage, because there will be a huge surplus in the market. OPEC alone cannot really fix the price of oil or defend the price of oil unless you have a joint effort by the major consumers, the major oil companies, and the major producers of oil. Once you remove the psychology from the area, and then you work only with the fundamentals, I see the price of oil coming way down. Because in the second quarter of this year, what is needed from OPEC will be about 20 and a half million barrels a day. The OPEC production right now, even without Kuwait and Iraq, is over 23 and a half million barrels a day. If the oil companies with the huge stock they have, they try to destock, then demand for OPEC oil might come down to 18 and a half million barrels a day. So you have a huge surplus. Well, it's anybody's guess, probably $12, to maybe even below that. You're very welcome. Okay, that's, that's all right. That's all. Okay, are we, are we clear? Yep. Thank you very much. Yes, Karen? Yes. I will. All right, well. Uh,